scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Are we together now? So it's very, very important. So that's one index. The second index is your degree of comprehension. The degree to which you are having understanding on the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. So that your degree of conformity, to what degree do I see Christ in you? In fact, Paul puts it this way. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already saved. So conformity to the image of Christ and access to the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. These two will naturally produce empowerment impartation access to the anointing are we together now so that's it about vision god bless you yes sir i appreciate you sir so i want to know uh, what's your name my name is oko sampotens okay yes when um you there is a signal that an attack is coming on your spiritual life and you you pray against it but then actually you are going down spiritually sorry again you're going down spiritually your spiritual life you are going down spiritually yeah kind of you have an attack is coming on your spiritual life and then you attack from hell construct your question pray, very logical so that pray, you prayer prayer life for instance is your going down life is going down yes and then you you pray you pray against it then a time comes that what the very incidents that causes you to go down finally happens Although you prayed against it, and it, it happens to, um, you, you feel that, okay, you failed. And then the Spirit comes to um, encourage you that, as if it, 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 is, it was proposed by God. Okay, so what is the question? So now? my question now is, uh, when are, are those attacks actually, and after the attack, you grow higher. Are those attacks actually um, ingredients to, for you to grow spiritually, to live you the level it, you are? You mean a demonic attack? Uh, on your spiritual life for instance okay um his, his question has many sides to it i'm not getting exactly what he's asking but if i understand you well you mean your prayer life is going down yes are we together yes and then what happens there is a there, there is even a, there is a knowing in you that there, there that, is an attack yes a demonic attack on yes, your life yes okay and then for instance there is a, maybe a habit god has delivered you from and then there is a knowing that um, it's coming back or something. The devil wants to bring and it back. Pray, yeah. And you pray against it, let it not be, let it not be and Lord. Then it still happens. And then it happens. Okay. Then you feel like it's man, it's gone. Then there is an encouragement that as if this thing is proposed and then after that you feel a lifting higher. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. It's not a habit. It's not proposed to lift you up spiritually. What you see is an interplay of your carelessness and the mercy of God and the grace of God. There are many things interwoven. So you don't justify that because you grew from it. It meant God brought it. Now, we must understand that there are different attributes of God that um, it is part of the love of God. Now, love in the spirit is not affection. Love in the spirit is a realm with many dimensions. There is a dimension of love called discipline. There is a dimension of love called judgment. There is a dimension of love called mercy. There is a dimension of love called justice. Are we together? That's why Paul says to know the length, the breadth, and he, he gives love a dimension. So when we say the love of God comes to you, it can come as his goodness. 
it has, can come as his chastisement. Are we together? It can come as his mercy. Now you are a believer. Number one, we have to examine what made your prayer life to go down. Right? There are two reasons why your prayer life can go down. Number one, it can be the natural fatigue that comes from the spirit and the flesh contending together. According to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. It says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. Right? So it says the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh and there is a contention. You get up in the morning. I mean, there are ladies to resist. There is beer to cast away. There, there are all kinds of things to happen. There is bribery and corruption to run away from. At the end of it, after a while, it's like, it's like wear and tear. Your spirit can be fatigued. That's not backsliding. That's simply a tiring because of your faculties that help you interact with the spirit. At that point, the solution is a retreat. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Even the young men can be weary. They can faint. All right? Then, but they that wait upon the Lord. But in a situation where it is an attack, which often happens, there are three seasons where Satan attacks people. Number one, at the birthing of something new. The moment there is something new about to happen in your life, part of the many events that happen is a strange attack that has nothing to do with your spiritual life. You read the Bible and you find out it's not unusual. Right? Very, very important. There is always a strange attack. Revelations. I saw a mystery. A woman who was carrying a man-child about to give birth to that child and a dragon came and stood waiting for the child to come so that she will eat. Now, Satan tries to stop you at the time of sowing your seeds. Any kind of seed. Spiritual seed. If he cannot stop it, he will try to stop the gestation period by bringing impatience, taking advantage of your human nature that hope deferred makes the heart weary. Are we together now? And if he cannot stop it, then he will wait for you at the point of harvest so that he will abort the harvest. These are the three seasons and stages of Satan's attack. So before you start ministry, look at that. He did it to Moses. Stage one, when Moses was about to be birthed and conceived they wanted to kill all the people so to abort the destiny from day one now that it did not happen he wanted to implicate moses and he caused moses to kill somebody so that it will affect him the process and then eventually towards the end of his life he used anger and stopped him from entering so there are three stages of satan's attack are we together we see that even in the life of jesus Jesus about to be born, his star shines in the east. Wise men follow him. Herod wants to kill him. Are we together? Then later on again, we see that through the process, after his baptism, Satan comes to wait for him. And then he tries to jeopardize his destiny by telling him, I'll give you the kingdom, bow down. And since he refused, and then he tried and tried and tried, all through the lifetime of Jesus, Satan could not get him. And then the last stage was in hell. When Jesus was preparing to defeat all the cohorts of hell and come out, all the demons and the principalities were on him to force him to bow. And then he rose up and you know that when Jesus was about to resurrect, what happened? They paid some people to lie. Even when he resurrected, he, they guarded the place and when he resurrected, they paid some people. They said, go and lie that the disciples came and stole his body. So we see that there are seasons. You can actually discern seasons where you know you are liable to attacks. Except you do not have spiritual intelligence. Now, Satan, I'm using this, are, are we getting blessed? Is God speaking to us? Satan is not omniscient. There are three attributes that make God sovereign. Number one is his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere. Satan is not everywhere. Job 1 verse 1. From whence comest thou? Later on you read, from running to and fro god doesn't run to and fro his eyes can see everything the all-seeing eyes of god are we together now number two his omniscience his ability to know all things satan does not know all things he works with informations that's why he uses human agents to probe into people that's why satan pursued prophets because he wanted to hear what god was telling them are we together now very important and then number three, his omnipotence. 
his ability to have all power once have i spoken twice have we heard that all power belongs to the lord now satan does not have these attributes are we together so satan can discern seasons of breakthrough in your life and that season is usually communicated in the spirit by unusual angelic activities satan was once a cherub and so he understands remember when jacob slept right when you read genesis 28 when jacob slept he saw a ladder there were unusual activities happening are we together now the same thing jesus told nathaniel in john chapter 1 he said you will see many things you see the heavens open and all of that so what happens is that at a point where the devil sees that there are unusual activities or prophecy has revealed what god is about to do that's why when prophecy comes that's not the time to cross your leg paul spoke to his son timothy he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecies because prophecy is an announcement it's an unveiling the moment the voice of god prophetically spoke john said behold the lamb and a voice said this is my beloved son satan started chasing him are we together now so when there is an attack it usually is that god is, is trying to do something in your life and satan is trying to raise a counter attack at that point if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom there is a secret to tap into a higher supply of grace are you following me now and that's the power of a retreat isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 they that wait the moment you sense that there is a lot of boisterous activities in your life and you will know it by the intuition of the spirit some of you will see it in dreams some of you will have it in visions some of you prophecies will come to you and many of us who are used to rejecting prophecy now prophecy must not be exalted above the word of god however it's important to many times pay attention to it especially when it's coming from vessels that know god and are credible it's important to pay attention praise the lord very very important so when there is an attack and it is a demonic attack if it prevails over you an attack is inevitable on the saints and it's not a surprising thing the surprise however is when satan prevails are we together now because even in heaven there was war the bible said there was war in heaven that that dragon lucifer he rose and archangel michael also rose but satan prevailed not there was no place found for him and he was casted to the earth and there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth you know satan that old serpent he has come with anger and great fury are we together now so if there is an attack an affliction the secret is prayer and it's in a secret place so if your prayer life died it's because you did not build momentum before that time are we together that's the reason why it is important for every believer to have what we call it's like a spiritual bank it's like an energy bank so your daily prayer the bible says redeeming the time that's the mystery there are two words that are used time in the greek there is chronos and there is kairos chronos is the passage of time kairos is an opportune time or a set time the bible uses these two words in the book of psalms it said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time chronos to favor her yea the kairos when you translate it to hebrew the set time are we together now so there is a set time an opportune time where major things happen between heaven there is serious business between you and heaven and at that time the devil knows and he will launch attacks so what you do is you build a spiritual fortification both spiritual intelligence and capacity in the place of prayer so that at such time it will sustain you the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle what was wrong your strength your spiritual strength now is small so if you fell in that attack is because your strength was small are we together let's assume let's use something maybe pornography are we together now and it's something god had delivered you from and you sense that the devil is trying to drive you again into porn, uh, pornography are we together now and then you fell to it that falling is not a test that falling is not the furnace of affliction we're talking about 
that you fell simply because your spirit did not sustain the strength and the energy to scale through but then in the midst of it the dimension of god's love called mercy comes in so don't confuse it that because you learn more from that situation it means it was god that orchestrated it god simply took advantage of it and allowed his mercy to prevail so that in your rising you will now rise better stronger and more anointed this is what makes god love are you getting it now but that does not mean god intended for you to necessarily fall the falling is simply the limitation of your spirit man i don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes sorry and uh, this is there are many people if yeah. you ask two two questions please if you come out after two questions you go and sit down and hope that somebody will ask your question are we together yeah um, this has been happening i will see some things i won't i will not know how to inquire for the meaning and when it happens later sometimes they are not good at times it posi it's positive you will what sorry see for instance you see so, things yeah, yeah, visions now. yes now like there was a time i saw myself traveling with a lady and when it came i didn't understand what it meant when it came you were traveling to, with a lady uh, to, a, a vision. to a place yes when it to came where? to a place i didn't know we were going okay, to a place. okay no so location the, okay the reality was that the person was under attack and I was the one to lead her to the prayer place. I'm, uh, in and that, that oh, was you where, held her and you were taking her yeah, to a place. Okay. That's where she got her. This thing, but I didn't understand the meaning then. Now, recently, I saw a, a lady, my cosmate, um, pick a bag and was traveling. I didn't know what it meant. The next day, uh, she actually told me she was, tra she was traveling to a place. I said, what for? She said, somebody just died there. Now, I understood that uh, maybe we were, if we had prayed, about the journey and all of that, if it was a bad one. So, how does one, my question is, how would one be, uh, how would one know the meaning of the pictures you are seeing at the time of the vision to help your direction in prayers? Okay, God bless you. Now, there are two things here that I will attempt to respond to. I, I don't know if we understand his question, but um, after this, we'll take three people from outside before we continue. So, protocol help us. We'll get the three people from outside who have questions. Please, you see how time is going. If you come and you ask a question that doesn't make sense, we have agreed as a congregation that we are sending you back. Please, we intend to grow and we want to redeem the time. Are we together? So please, before you come, make sure you are prepared not to disgrace yourself. Are we together? Ask questions. Seek counsel with your neighbor whether your question is constructive enough. Yes, yes, please. Please, so that you don't, you don't come out here and, and waste our time. But the gentleman was saying something that I consider to be important. Now, I think the biggest error in the prophetic is lack of spiritual growth to contend for accurate interpretation. The problem with the prophetic or visionary encounters usually, three of us can see the same thing in the spirit, but it does not mean the same for all three of us. Are we together? Now, that's the problem I have with books that say, if you see a chain, it means oppression. What if it's a chain watch? that I saw what if it's a, a necklace to mean an ornament of royalty you can't just say I saw a chain it means I'm under attack I, I remember a lady years ago who was pressing into God and when she got to that dimension she she a, another lady had a dream about her and saw her naked and came and met her and started lambasting her and say you are walking in immorality what kind of nonsense life is this you are giving us an impression like you are serious with god now your secret has been revealed and the lady was depressed and she came and met me that that nakedness was a message in the spirit that she was becoming intimate with the spirit but it was wrongly interpreted three of us can see a finger in the spirit for one, it means warning. Stop what you are doing. For another man, one, it means direction. Come up here. Are we together? For another, it means I am blessing the works of your hands. We all saw the same thing. So it is wrong. Remember in the interpretation of the dream of, of, of Joseph and the wine presser and baker, all of them saw three, three things. Three baskets, three this. He interpreted for the first one and he was happy. Then the other one said, me too, I have my own. He said, in three days, they will hang you. And this is established. And they hung him after three days. Are we together? So, stop going around with predefined prophetic interpretations. 
you only make certain prophetic interpretations predefined if the character of their operation has been established in the world for instance anywhere you see a dove is a representation of the manifestation of the holy spirit anywhere it's a spiritual symbol that the spirit of god has associated himself with except if you see a dove and you see it oscillating that's a that's deception for instance because according to the scriptures the enemy can parade himself as an angel of light are we together now so it is true that there are certain default symbols that help us communicate with visionary encounters but not just that you see you can see a woman in the spirit you can see yourself moving with a woman and you may think that god is punishing you from lo or lost a woman in the spirit is a gate that woman you are seeing could be that you are entering a new season are you seeing now but because you do not sustain that spiritual intelligence you go around casting something you should be prophesying to come and, and all of that so i think um for the gentleman i think i've been able to help him i i hope that i got his question correctly if i didn't i'm, I'm so sorry praise god yes my praise dear. god Permit me to say this that first. That is an honor to finally meeting you after listening to your message for a very long time. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm very Thank happy you. I'm here tonight. You're My welcome. question is to Baruch Itko. The first question is, what do you do as a person when you're struggling with spiritual good? Today you are hope, tomorrow spiritual you are Spiritual growth. Uh, does Watch. it mean that um, it's like a grab that you'll be going zigzag, zigzag till you get to that final slope? Uh, or okay. is it that you question just stop? Two. The second question is, you're talking about dream and vision. In my lodge, we had a case where someone said he had a dream, blah, 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 blah. And it really caused a big advocate in my lodge. Look at the congregation. Okay. It, it really caused a big advocate in my lodge. I'm asking the question that... He had a dream about the lodge or something? About the sister, that the sister came to seduce him, blah, blah, blah. And everybody was now calling the sister a witch. That has, does it mean that all dreams come from God? Okay. When we see dreams, does it mean that everything is, we see, it is coming from God? Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you, my dear. Um, her first question was, sometimes they should not go immediately so that they can remind me in case I've lost, um, I'm interpreting them with my spirit, so my mind is hardly here. Um, her first question was what? <laughs> up, up and down. Okay. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, please. What does... The Bible say the path of the just is like a shining light that does what shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Now there is a difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding. I think I've, I've cleared I've cleared that. All right, for as long as you are wearing this body, the limitations of carrying up mortality, right? The concept of immortality is a concept that is accessible. But immortality is not an impartation. Immortality is the resultant effect of accessing light from the spirit. Because the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed. Now, the problem usually is that our lifetime and our level of regeneration is so slow that our lifetime will not be able to help us change that fast. That's why we die. Are we together now? But it is possible that a man can contend for that dimension. Enoch did it. Elijah did it. So we know that it's possible to live bodily, although in a glorified form, out of this earth. Moses didn't do it um, and all of that. But at least we have two witnesses, two evidences in the Bible that they were able to access that. So when you find yourself, see, and, and this is, her question is very instrumental to your spiritual health. If you are sick and you don't know, how many of you have seen people in the village who are sick, they don't even know? To them, they are healthy. You just test them and say, Mr. Man, you have malaria plus plus, and yet the person is playing football. You not, now tell the person, go to the hospital. That's how many people are spiritually. And for me, your spiritual life is tested based on your passion for God. There are certain things that start happening in your life that you know there is danger. Number one, your prayer life. Your, when your prayer life is, is nose diving, don't ever pretend that it's a dimension of growth. You are backsliding immediately. Once your prayer life is going down, don't let Satan fool you and say you are just in a season where uh, God doesn't want you to say anything or this and that and that. Be very careful. 
because it could be deception to destroy you your spiritual life number two your passion for the word number three your passion for the house of god number four i want to call it your your sense of morality is important if all of a sudden I sit down and I find out that I start lusting after you, call me apostle, call me whatever, I'm lusting after you. I came for Koinonia, I saw you, Abel is preaching, Cain is there, disturbing his mind. What do you think I'll do? It will be stupid for me to wear suit again and come back. I'll use the week to flog out that element of the flesh that is growing. Many of us ignore those promptings until it grows to a point where it backfires obviously. That's when we start crashing in. The mo See, the Bible says, let sin have no place. Don't give the devil a foothold. The moment you find out that there is a place, there, is, there are certain things you are bending on your values. You don't pray for three days or four days. You feel all right. Very, very all right. You carry your Bible and there is no zeal to read. Sometimes it could be in the presence of God, you'll be able to find out whether it's spiritual fatigue or... It is backsliding. Are we together? But ultimately, the difference between spiritual fatigue and backsliding is that under spiritual fatigue, your passion is still there. It's just the zeal and the strength to press through that is not there. But under backsliding, your zeal and your passion dies. Are, are we together now? For the our brother that saw a vision that a lady is seducing him, um, that's, that's wrong. You see, this, this is the problem we have. When we live in christian communities because people wake up with all kinds of things i spoke to you about interpretation this brother may be a sincere person maybe he's here we are not creating fight are, you, are we together you don't know whether he followed you for koinonia you said he's in your lodge now the point is this it is wrong you see prophecy and in the realm of and the realm of the spirit also depends on your mental renewal for correct interpretation are we together? I can guarantee you that this brother's spiritual paradigm fundamentally is faulty. For him to see an innocent lady and call her a witch to say, is he the only person in the lodge? You'll be surprised it's not even maybe the most handsome or something. So, um, it's, it's a wrong paradigm. Now, you point, do you know another thing? It is possible that I can go to bed and see Shalhoma chasing me maybe with a stick in a dream are we together now and all of a sudden i wake up and i say i saw shahoma chasing me and his welfare that cooks for me i put two and two together and i say my life is under i'm in danger i mean and then i now dissolve koinonia welfare because they are trying to destroy apostle joshua selman some of you you have that paradigm now it can happen a possibility exists that such kinds of things happen i mean in the house of god there are all kinds of things but then i'm saying that your interpretation primarily should not be that because he saw a lady if he does not understand seek counsel there are there are spiritual puzzles that we put together you must let scripture interpret your encounters are we together now i mean in the bible women seduce men what was the progression of the seduction samson was seduced are we together who again was seduced in the bible huh job was not seduced who? joseph was seduced you some of you are saying job look at how your poor but please how about this is koinonia don't we're well, bible people how, job was never seduced the only woman with him was his wife please don't go and say that anywhere it's very bad are, are we together now my dear so that 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 teaching even if it was true this is what i would have done if i had a dream and you pursue me or you are trying to sleep with me or something in a dream right even if it was your face it's wrong to get up and call you a witch do you know because you don't know what spiritual challenges she's facing you now get up and you now call her a witch three situations would help to interpret that number one it could be that there is a spiritual operation around your life and your family that births seduction it can be true are we together that you as a person you are not bad but it's possible that you are being influenced by the spirit of lust 
or because of the background you are coming from. And so it will happen in the similitude of your face, disturbing that person. Are we together now? And so you will feel bad. Number two, it can be the spirit of confusion. The devil masquerading to now cause confusion. Are we together? So he will now use your face. Just like you saw your father quarreling you. You saw your mother beating you. You just got up and said your mother is a witch. Anybody, whether my father or my mother. The, the woman is innocent. You find out that we keep calling people witches and wizards who have no business with witchcraft. However, 80% of them are being influenced by spirits that operate in the character of what they were accused of. You see that? So, um, whoever he called a witch, I can guarantee you, is not a witch. Please, she left her father's house to also come and do NYC. She's not a witch. She may not be spiritually strong and all of that, but she's not a witch. It may be wrong. So, go and comfort her. The brother, what he saw, when you have encounters, you are not guaranteed to have interpretation for them. But one thing you can do is blast in tongues sufficiently until your spirit man gives you a note of peace. At that point, you know that whatever is the issue, whether calling it forth or driving it away, it has been settled. It is for that cause the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. I cannot tell you that every encounter I've had, I've had interpretation for. In fact, some of them may be years in the future. As I grow spiritually or I have other encounters that piece them up together, I now see the message. But in the interim, every time you wake up from an encounter, praying in the spirit is the way forward and you pray until there is that check in your spirit that whatever it is it's been settled you understand so that's what you should do god bless you and increase you eh? okay Please, straight sir. to the point um we have okay let's have one or two more people two more people please if you are sure your question is really going to bless us we have a little time and do, please and please don't ask anything here that will waste our time are we together the gentleman uh, if your questions will be fast i can listen to it and combine it that gentleman there's a lady in the background you sister the one waving your hands come um have we had anybody outside okay there's one person outside okay one usher come you're a worker we love you come okay so quickly good evening sir How are so you? a process whereby don't look at me. As you are saying it, look at the congregation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. In the process whereby someone is suffering from the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Yes. Example. What is lust of the flesh? For Immorality. example, masturbation. Okay. Or lesbianism. And you are praying. Praying in tongues. Pray. You are in the presence of prayers. And you are still having the feelings. In the presence of praying, you, know, you are still struggling and struggling. You are trying to pray. The spirit is just trying and trying. So, sir, what do you What's do? the way forward? God bless you. Thank you. He's been very sincere. Look, let me tell you the truth. The goal of this question and answer session is to help us grow spiritually. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Praise God. There are people like that. In fact, I've seen people who are suffering from immorality or lust and they're on three days dry. On the third day, before they break with food, are we together now? The devil does some kind of things, positions, the same lady they used to sleep with and it happens again or internet pornography or whatever we've seen these kinds of cases so um do you know what deliverance is deliverance is not just coughing out things and rolling around and pushing chairs and bringing people here deliverance is the spiritual mechanism with which a man is separated from a spirit or an influence over his life are we together now? There are three dimensions or three levels that access Satan in a man's life. Number one is called covenants. Covenants. It is usually the strongest of the three. Number two is disobedience or ignorance. Number two is ignorance. Then number three is disobedience. Now, the danger of covenant and ties is that your personal salvation does not take away the covenant that is in a territory. Are we together now? That is the reason why someone can be born again. There are still corrupt people in Nigeria. But are you corrupt? No. Are we together now? Nigeria is termed a corrupt nation. Yet there are righteous people who are true. Are we together now? 
the earth is the Lord, yet they are still bombing children and disturbing people. So there are covenants. A covenant is a legal agreement between spirit entities and human beings or fellow human beings. Right? That either opens up access for good or of evil. Covenants have consequences. Right? They can, they can, they can transcend generations. So this is very important. That's why you find out that the classic sign of covenants is that there must be a pattern to it. The moment there is a covenant involved in any process, there is a pattern. If these three guys are brothers and you find out that Michael is very rich, Kenny is very rich, Promise is very rich, you see that pattern. There is a covenant that grants that access. Promise, very poor. Kenny, very poor. Michael, struggling. There is also a pattern. So, patterns are usually communications that the access point for the realm of the spirit in that situation is a covenant. So, you find out that a father is an armed robber. When he stole, his son did not know. Many years later, the son will also come and steal. Have you seen people like that? The same pattern that happened to their parents repeats themselves. Because the patterns are a spiritual formula. There is an enchantment like a spell that makes it happen. I know a lady who, who I, I, I think um, um, she got pregnant and the person who got her pregnant, I think was a man of God. Same thing happened to her mother. Same thing happened to her grandmother. One reverend in their village got the grandmother pregnant. Many years later, one, one evangelist or something got the mother pregnant. And then now, one brother in a fellowship gets the lady pregnant. Now, that brother does not know the reverend that got uh, uh, um, grandma pregnant that time when she was young. But then, the truth remains that there is a pattern. Are, are we together? Are you getting it now? And I know that sometimes many of us are preached into believing they don't exist. And we try to explain them away. But the truth is, it's there. It can be dealt with. Potentially, the birth of Jesus gives us access to victory in this thing. But there is the experience of establishing that victory. Are we together? Number two is ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance grants access to demon spirits. They manipulate on the ignorance of men and open them up to certain tragic manifestations. Then number three is disobedience. You know it, but your capacity to walk thereof in that obedience is not there. So these are the three access points. So if you find out that you are praying, praying and fasting about the issue of lust or immorality or any entanglement, and it's repeating itself. You need help. That's the reason why God puts um, gifts to the body. To be able to help. Right? Remember our teaching for this course. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. God has elected certain people in the body of Christ. And created platforms that can be able to help people deal with these things. That's why we organize miracle services. That's why we organize um, um, all kinds of meetings. That's why when we come to God's presence like this, we take our time to soak in the glory so that the presence and the power of God can come and then address some of these things. So for that brother, you may need help. Seek help. Look for an anointed man of God, not just a counselor. Somebody with an anointing that has been demonstrated to produce results and it can help you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. My name is Luke. My name is Luke. It's talking about the presence of God. Okay. Uh, I heard of your message you preach about doers of the world. Okay. And uh, you mentioned, I forgot the man name, but you say pursuer of, of the presence. When we pursue, how do one pursues the presence of God? And how do we abide in that presence of God? Like in Psalm 91 verse 1, when it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Sometimes I may get interpretation of that verse, but sometimes the interpretation does not suit me. So I'm asking, that how do one... What, do, what are the criteria for one to dwell in the presence of God and remain constant in the presence of God? Okay. There are parameters. Number one, you must consistently create an atmosphere. You see, I preached a message years ago called lo the law of atmosphere. Everything thrives based on the atmosphere created. The presence of God requires an atmosphere. The presence of God is invoked, just like you invoke spirits. There is an atmosphere that allows the presence of God to be made manifest. Are we together now? Worship is one key that opens up the presence of God. Your passion 
your love towards God. In other words, you're prioritizing him. Making him your one and only and ultimate is one way to get the presence of God. Obedience in scripture. He that keepeth my commands, John um, um, 16, 21, I think I'm right. Or 1421. He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. So the love of God is very, very important. Yes, my dear. Praise God. I'm precious, Moses. Um, I want to ask, uh, um, there's this friend of mine that I was preaching to. And um, she was telling me that there's no heaven, that we are going to stay here. There's no there's, heaven? Yes, and there's no hell. Uh, okay. So, now we're getting into I've, denominational. And, okay. Um, she was not, I was not telling her there is the no story heaven. of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. I now asked her that, okay, where did Lazarus went to and where was the rich man? Then she asked me to open to Revelation 21 verse 1. And after much argument, she was now asking me that. In Revelation 21, she said, and I saw a new heaven and a coming new down earth. ahead. And, you know, she was now asking me that, okay, where is that new heaven? And the new earth. And I didn't know what to really tell her. I just kept quiet. I was confused in that aspect. God bless you. Um, I don't know if it's the millennial reign of Christ or. I understand. I don't really. You see, we labor day and night, uh, contributing our quota to help believers become matured. Are we together? You make people become matured by giving them understanding. Now, before I answer. I don't mean in any way. I know that there are different denominations, different Christian sects with their understandings about heaven and all of that. And um, I'm not giving you a denominational opinion. Are we together now? There are many instances in scripture that lets us know that there is heaven. Are we together now? Very, very important. I, I think that um, it doesn't make sense to begin to make all those arguments. Genesis 1 verse 1, the very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created what? And the earth. Now, I think that alone answers. First verse, first chapter in the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. So, don't say where is it. Created, God created the heavens. And notice he never said the heaven. Heavens, different planes. Paul himself gave us an example he said he was caught up to the third heaven that means there are other dimensions the psalmist said the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord so we know that there are different planes but there is heaven hallelujah are we together now the bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above not just the sky are we together now acts chapter one when jesus was about to be taken when he lifted to heaven Two angels appeared and told the people, men and brethren, why look ye? You know, this and that and that. He said, this same Jesus. Is it not the Acts chapter 1? Let's use it to answer. At least let's use the words of Jesus. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is going to heaven now. And he's speaking to us. Or the angels are responding. Acts chapter 1. I, I don't want to quote it wrongly. Verse, verse 10. verse 10 i know that when you read from verse 9 let's start from verse 9 it gives us an impression like he just vanished he did not just vanish a cloud received him a cloud received him and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight verse 10 please quickly and while they looked steadfastly towards where heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel verse verse 11 which he also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same jesus which is taken up from you into where into where so we know that heaven is the habitation the heaven of heavens is where jesus himself lives there is a place a spiritual location called heaven it says shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where heaven are we together so that issue of saying 
um, there is no heaven is not true. Please, the Bible does not negate that. The fact that there is heaven. The Bible clearly tells us in many instances, Old and New Testament, that there is heaven. Jesus himself, I want to give you the ultimate proof now. Jesus himself made us to know that there is heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, when he was teaching us how to pray, he said, our father who art where? He didn't say our father who art around. Our father who art in an exact location, heaven. From that point, we hallow your name. Your kingdom come. So please, let's rest this issue once and for all. There is a real place called heaven and, and um, there are people there right now. Are we together? And we hope that one day we'll join them. Now, what we need to explain is the fact that the Bible says the old heaven and the old earth will be rolled away like a curtain and then a new heaven and a new earth will come. It is true that that very habitation of God will eventually be transported back to this realm. But it won't be in the similitude of these three dimensions. So it's not like we're going to have another three-dimensional realm. No. There will be another atmosphere that comes to occupy this space. This is the sovereignty of God. This is part of the mysteries of the kingdom. Where this whole heaven and all earth will be rolled away to, frankly speaking, we don't know. The Bible does not reveal that. Uh, this is part of the information that is contained in the age to come. Are we together now? That's why there are ages to come that carry certain informations that are important for the saints. So there is heaven, my dear. And every time you preach to people and they argue with you, don't turn your evangelism into debate. Politely decline. You may look foolish. Don't say, no, I can't let this go like this. Let it go like that so that God will be glorified. Yes, my dear. Praise the Lord. My name is Christiana Kadri. Thank you. My question is, uh, like somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a man of God, and you have been waiting. <laughs> okay. Many ladies are happy. Okay, let, let's get the question, please. And Someone prophesied to you. And nobody... And said you'll marry a pastor, yes. and you have been waiting. And the person has been waiting because... One miracle service, I saw you, sir, you prophesied to one lady that she's going to marry a pastor. And one day again, I'm listening to one man of God. He was saying, anybody that prophesied, if he's a man of God, that the thing did not happen, continue waiting. Even when you die waiting, continue waiting. So, I'm, I think that, so, when somebody prophesied to you, you're going to marry a pastor, and the pastor is not coming, you continue waiting. What okay. to do? That's a very good question, I think. We can use it. It's not just prophesying about marriage. It could be about anything. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I, I understand what she's saying. And she's communicating probably the pain of a lot of people. Because over time, we men of God have spoken to people. And there are times that for others, the prophecy have even come with precise detail. You are going to marry a man called uh, Ebenezer. He's in media department. The day you will see him is wearing a white cloth, dark trouser, he's holding a camera. If he snaps you, just know. <laughs> now, come Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer. Come now, Ebenezer. Now, Ebenezer, you now come for koinonia. And Ebenezer is just snapping around and focuses on you. And your heart is beating. It's true. Ebenezer snaps you and goes to marry somebody else are we together now and now you are waiting and you are frustrated now there are three things here i want to explain i know we have all loved but let's listen closely now the bible says that even the ministration of the gifts must be done according to the measure of grace are we together two of us can be prophets but the grace the access to authority and strength the spiritual ranking that authorizes us in the dispensing is like you have two doctors one is just doing his housemanship another one is doing another one is a consultant they are all called doctors but are they the same they are not the same at all are we together now this is how it is spiritually so when we when there is the ministration of the word notice sometimes when you see me wanting to talk to people i call people out by the spirit and i just keep quiet 
because of what the Lord is communicating to me, sometimes it's like a feedback mechanism. I'm checking in my spirit to make sure that this is not an interplay of the flesh and to also make sure if God wants me to reveal it to them. Sometimes you see me and I talk to people. I take away the mic because the information is very sensitive and may is something that can be embarrassing. Are we together now? But let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you this sincerely. One thing I know about marriage, and we have discussed that, make reference to my message, um, challenging discussions on late marriage. I think we touched that area where the issue of God said overrides the word of God. The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets has in this last day spoken to us through his son which he has appointed to be heir over all things and we know that that son is the living logos the word of god and so whether it is joshua selman i'm not telling you to doubt the word by the grace of god we press into the word of god to make sure that we bring accurate words and there is a track record you can follow up the things that have been prophesied over people some of them have come to pass. Some of them are already on the way. Praise the Lord. Now, um, no matter what it is, if a man of God gives you a prophetic word, and after a season, you do not, for instance, let's use marriage. I prophesy to this lady now, and I tell her, a pastor is coming. And Michael comes to her. And let's assume Michael is just a businessman. You know that the natural tendency is for her to drive him away. And say, please, you are not a pastor. Um, he may be a pastor when he marries her. God didn't lie. Are we together? But sometimes, it can also be that there is need for a check. In fact, sincerely speaking, let me tell you, it is very, it is very praiseworthy to go back to God again. We have seen instances in the Bible where God spoke and under certain circumstances he had to speak new things again. Are we together? An example is Isaiah 38 when he spoke to Isaiah to speak to Hezekiah. Remember that scripture? He came and told him, Hezekiah, put your house in order. You will not recover from this sickness. You are going to die. Are we Bible students? So when I, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and invoked the mercy of God, God sent Isaiah again. Are we together? To go back. So there is a possibility. It's not a doctrine. But through scripture we see that there is a possibility. Um, the alignment of man can make God say new things. I'll give you an instance. If this lady is your wife. Are we to, um, example, example. If this lady is your wife. I'm not showing you your wife. If this lady is your wife. Of, of course. Let me just put a, a little word of blessing. We are proud of our ladies. And if I say it and God is, 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 is directing you there, there's nothing wrong. Ladies, you should give me a happy meal tomorrow. <laughs> are we together? But now this is the example. If this is your wife, truly, truly, and she says, I'm not doing, do you think God is going to yoke you and tell you you will not marry any, anybody again? Because of her carelessness and disobedience. Are we together now? God will not put you to ransom. The same way if God calls you into ministry and you say no. Will he force you? Will he kill you? The same way he, he tells you that you should surrender all to him. When you refuse, he will not force you. There's hellfire already to settle that issue. So he will not force you. Please, I want us to understand that the plans of God can change. It's his purposes that are eternal. This is a revelation that would deliver many of us right now. The plans of God can change. God planned that you fly Ari to Lagos. And something happens. God will tell you to enter if it's in a cheap transport. The plans have changed. But the destination is still Lagos. But when you sit down and say it must be Ari or it must be flight. Are we together now? In scripture, again and again. For instance, do you know it was never God's desire for men to have earthly kings rule over them? When you read in the Bible, it was his desire that he remains their king. But the people out of anger and rebellion, they say, give us a king. 
And God had to make prophet Samuel to go and anoint Saul, the son of Kish, to become a king. Are we together now? Yes. It was never even God's desire. Listen. It was never God's desire for David, for the tribe of David, to be the lineage with which Jesus would come. It was supposed to be Saul. Are we together? But Saul made a costly mistake that costed him that opportunity. Remember when he went and he was off, um, giving the offering by himself. They asked him to wait for the coming of the prophet. But he could not wait because the people were murmuring. And being a king, he was not a priest. Are we together? Because in ancient times, there were kings, priests, and prophets. They operated in different dimensions. Occasionally, the priests were also the prophets, like we have in the case of Samuel. He was both a priest and a prophet. Are we together now? And so in that incidence, um, Saul now started, he made sacrifices. And while he finished, Samuel just came. And Samuel told him, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had waited for me to come and offer the sacrifice, God would have established your throne forever. So it would not be the lion of the tribe of, or, or the, the root of David. It would now be the root of Saul. Again, we see that the first person God called in the Bible was not Abraham. The first person God called in the Bible was his father, Terah. Terah was tired and he said, I'm not doing. And then God looked for Abraham. Are we together now? So that's very, very important. I think that um, we need to understand this. My, my dear, if, even if it's me that prophesied to you and you are tired, come and meet me. Come for counseling and say, let's, let's hear God. Let's pray about this issue again. Especially where there is a God-fearing, very serious and responsible brother who is ready to marry and is coming around you. You are hanging the person while waiting for the pastor to see if the pastor will come or not. Don't dilly dial. Find the man of God. If the person who prophesied to you is still within reach, find him. If you discern pride and arrogance in him that he's embarrassed to recheck whether his hearing was correct, go and look for another man of God to speak to you. Are we together now? I know there's a lady who came one time, I think from Port Harcourt, coming to confirm because a man of God described somebody, a fair person, and she had been waiting. And there was somebody who really loved God. When she came, I prayed for her and I said, I, I wish you a happy married life. And they are married now, happily married to the glory of God. She would have been waiting forever for, for a, a yellow person to appear. So, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, all these questions we have attempted reveal three things. Number one, it is costly. To be ignorant over spiritual things. Are we together? It is costly. Just a little question and answer session. But it has exposed us to a lot of things. It is costly. I trust that with this little question and answer session. It has activated our appetite for more of God. You see. If you do not understand scripture. You will be deceived in many ways. You notice that every question I attempt to answer. I show you a scripture to support it. Because you cannot afford to answer questions with opinions. And you will not know God's opinion if you don't study. Study. Study to show yourself, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word. Praise the Lord. Psalms 82 from verse 5 says, They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. So it is important for us to be good students of the word. Not religiously studying it, but studying it with everything that we have. Hallelujah. Number two, corporate fellowship is very important. It's part of the principles and the requirement for your spiritual growth. You can see that a platform like this has afforded us an opportunity to know more and to learn a few things to strengthen our spiritual life. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes from the head of Aaron, right? Down to his bird and to his cat and all of that. He said, dear, God had commanded the blessing. So it's very important. Corporate fellowship is important for our spiritual strengthening. 
hallelujah and then number three ultimately it reveals to us the necessity of the person of the holy spirit worship team sang the song beautifully we're going to sing that song again and and then we'll sing that song that came i can't even remember what we sang but try to remember it worship team we'll sing those two songs again very beautifully the holy spirit this place is called koinonia is our intimacy with him and our partnership with him that affords us the opportunity to access light and access his wisdom the bible says ride prosperously because of truth right you will only prevail by the truth you know not the truth that is available the truth you know it can be available but if you do not know it you will still die there are still people going to hell whereas the price for our sin has been paid for hallelujah we are going to pray um, just a few minutes and we'll be done we are going to pray and ask the Lord very passionately very passionately to open up our spirits to open up our spirits very very important while seated just pray we are going to stand up but then I want us to pray while seated and talk to the Lord some of us have seen this situation has revealed to some of us how clueless we are over spiritual things. If you were to be asked some of these questions, many of us see that this is like a, a test. Those outside, make sure you are praying at the back there, outside at the window. Make sure you are participating in the prayer. The Lord is with you right where you are. Make sure you are praying and say, Lord, please deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Deliver me from ignorance. Grant me access to the word. Grant me access to the word. Deliver me from spiritual ignorance. Lord, I want to be furnished, grounded in the truth. The Bible says that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and, and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He says for the equipping of the saints. The equipping of the saints that they the saints now equip will do the work of the ministry to the end that we all will come into the fullness of the the, the measure of the stature of Christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine lift your voice and pray say Lord in this time and age in this end times where there is a lot of error there is a lot of confusion i pray that i be delivered from spiritual ignorance lift your voice and pray deliver me oh god from ignorance open my eyes to access light in the spirit deliver me oh god from spiritual ignorance Pray. Make sure you are praying. Deliver me, O oh God, from spiritual ignorance. It's dangerous in these days not to lack the knowledge that you need. Number two, Lord, align my spirit 
in a way that I'll begin to touch realities in the realm of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Let there be a programming in my spirit. Let there be an alignment in my spirit, man. Have your way. I'm tired of wrong interpretation. I'm tired of interpreting spiritual realities in a wrong way. I'm tired of reading my Bible and not accessing the light and the power that I need. Pray. Align my spirit. I cry for an alignment upon my spirit, man. Have your way. Have your way. Everyone, please rise as we pray this very prayer point. It's important. Oh God, if ever you need a vessel, find one in me. Lift your voice and pray. Use me, oh God. Many of us have stopped praying that prayer. Use me for your glory. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, use me, use me, use me. I may not be a man of God, but make me a mighty vessel in your hand. Oh yes, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory. As an agent of deliverance. As an agent of transformation. As an agent of healings. Miracles, signs, wonders. Use me in the prophetic, oh God. Use me in the apostolic, oh God. Use me in the healing ministry. Take your place, take your place, take your place. Hey. Holy God, take your place, take your place, take your place. Holy For your glory use me for your glory use me for your glory have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah i like us to pray any gift of the spirit any dimension that once walked in you but for some reason has stopped working. I like you to pray and say, Lord, revive her. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. I used to have dreams, but the dreams have disappeared. Lord, let it come back. I used to have encounters. I used to have ministration of angels. Oh God, my prophetic dimension was sharper than this. Something has happened. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration, oh God. Restoration of the gifts of the Spirit. Restoration of the wisdom of the Spirit. Restoration of passion. Passion for God. Restoration of passion. Restoration of hunger. Spiritual seriousness. Hunger. For Bible studies. Hunger. For prayer. Hunger. For fasting. Hunger. For the house of God. Hunger. To see his kingdom come. Take your place. 
Take your place. Pray from your heart. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Hallelujah. Listen. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Pay the price to discipline your spiritual atmosphere. Don't allow the things of the flesh pollute your spiritual atmosphere. It will destroy you, I tell you. Some of us is friends. I'm not teaching you to hate people. The character of the Christ is love. But you cannot give everybody access to pollute your environment with everything. No. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, please don't say it does not matter. The true spirit of holiness, let me tell you the truth. The true spirit of holiness is the atmosphere that brings the presence of God. The true spirit of holiness. Don't trivialize it. The true spirit of holiness is what creates the atmosphere of the spirit. Because he's called Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There is a beauty that holiness brings. It's called the beauty of holiness. Culture your atmosphere. Take God seriously. No one leg in, one leg out and you are just playing around. Don't be careless with your life hallelujah i just sense a need that we should make this prayer again a final point because like samson there are people who have lost touch with certain virtues you receive certain things maybe in a meeting or in koinonia or somewhere or an impartation a man of god laid hands on you and activated spiritual possibilities but some of us you did not know how to fan it to flame there are some of us here the level of the prophetic you should be walking in now, if you were consistent with God, you would have been walking in notable levels, but you are still at that level. There are some of us, the level of the teaching grace, if you were only serious with the word, you read your Bible once in a month, but look what you are doing. Imagine if you read it every day. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your spirit from me. We need that restoration. And we're going to pray. Make this prayer personal. Listen. You know where you are slacking in the spirit. Don't feel condemned. But you must sustain grace to catch up. Some of us is our prayer life. There's really nothing left there. Some of us is our word life. You are a prayer machine. But your word content is low. So there is wrong interpretation to your spiritual things. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, a restoration. Mention the area you want him to restore you. Lord, I need a restoration of your presence. I used to carry heavy weights of your presence. Everyone who came around me felt that presence. But for some reason, oh God, I've lost it. Pray. Restoration. Shabala balada 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 ba.
Hallelujah. Lift your hands as I pray for you. Fire is going to come on a lot of people. Just in one minute, there will be activations and impartations. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. There are a number of people in this place that the fire must be restored through apostolic fire, through prophetic fire. At the count of three, listen, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, for many of you from tonight, you will go back and the dreams will be restored. For many of you, right away, the healing anointing comes. Lift your voice. Father, I pray that in the next one minute, let there be a mighty restoration and an impartation as your people shout that name i pray that your glory will fall on them right now one two three receive it right now right now right now right now receive it my goodness help them that impartation that impartation receive it right now right now in the name of jesus Receive it, receive it. Dreams, dreams, dreams. The Lord is activating dreams. Prophetic dreams. Symbolic dreams. Restoration of healing power. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Hallelujah. The healing anointing is falling. I don't know why God is talking to me about healing. The healing anointing, receive it right now. Lord, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Take it. Take it now. 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 The healing virtue. I release it from the spirit. Power to heal. Power to heal. Power to heal. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Power to heal. Power to heal. In the name of Jesus. Power to heal. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I hear my spirit. The gift of utterance. Utterance. Lord where are those people? Like fire will come upon you. Some of you on your mouth, literally, utterance, utterance. I impart it right now, right now, right now. Utterance, inside and outside. Fire is falling. Mantles of utterance. of God. Hallelujah. Just one last one. And then we we'll take the altar call discernment this one will come on us many of you don't know what discernment is the ability to sustain capacity in the spirit father in the name of jesus i stand by this apostolic anointing activate discernment in your people right now at the count of three one two three take it take it take it take it Take it everywhere, inside and outside. The ability to sense the impulses of the spirit realm. The impulses of the spirit realm. The ability to understand the language of God. 
the language of God the language of God There are people here who have never given their hearts to Jesus Christ. Probably you were invited here for the first time. And there are still people here. Listen, please don't be distracted. Those under the anointing, just leave them, please. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I want to make it right with my maker tonight. I love him. I gave my heart to Christ. But for some reason, I found myself derailing. And tonight, I'm coming to tell him, Lord, I want to start afresh. I don't care whether you're a preacher or whatever. Make your way to the front right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. God bless you. There are people like that. Appreciate them as they're coming. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, my dear. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you, sir. Bless you, ma'am. Clear the way for those coming outside. Koinonia, celebrate them. Come, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Don't let anybody stop you. Keep coming. Those outside, clear the way for them. Keep coming. Don't let any devil stop you. Thank you so much for coming. This concerns your soul, your life, and everything. Lift your right hand and from the depth of your heart, I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus. Some of you, as you pray, the power of God, that hold of sin will leave you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come to you just as a child. I ask you to have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. I receive Jesus Christ into my life. Join them, please. From today, I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. I'm a child of God, genuinely saved. From today, the power of sin, of Satan, and the flesh is broken over my life. I'm a new creation in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for our brothers and sisters. We love them and we receive them into the fold. Lord, you know the challenges and the encumbrances that have stopped them from being passionate about the things of God. I pray tonight that they will go back with renewed strength. That in this place tonight may they find strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every habit, every spirit, every challenge that has held you bound, I cause it to its root in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and we welcome you into the greatest family in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Please follow the ushers waving their hands. They will have your information and will communicate to you. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze 
and don't forget to like for us thank you